Thank you very much and thank every one of you for coming here for a few minutes this morning to help us get started at this race for the United States Senate. Carol and I don't think we're starting late. As a matter of fact, we think we're starting on time because we've looked over the field and we know that's a reason to run. I want you to meet my wife, Carol, uh, who uh, is here today with me, her son, Brian Jordy, his wife, Jessica, my son, uh, Fad, who some of you know from Norfolk days, is a professor at the University of California at Irvine. And uh, in case you wonder how deep my Nebraska roots go, I want you to know about Fad, that his first name is Thurston, and he's named after a Nebraska county. But more fundamentally than that, he heard so many stories from me as a kid about the role of one particular U.S. president in the creation of the United States that when he had his first child, he gave that child the name Lincoln. When he had his first daughter, he named her Willa. I'm a Nebraskan. I um, lived an open life until now, a life that is in public view a life consumed in courts across this state and elsewhere. So I have written thousands of pages that are available to be read by the public. I have spoken millions of words that are recorded for public view. Lots of them down this hallway. This is uh, an extraordinary moment for me because I'm usually here for the work at that end of the building. But as I move to this new part of my life and work on this new approach to the issues that are before you, the lessons of the years past and the battles past will serve me well. Because I've learned something as a lawyer working for you, and that is that if we are focused on a goal and we are reasonable about our approach, and we work together to get there, we can get great things done. We can take down oppressive big corporations with your help, the help of many of you here and many more I'll see as we go west across the state, we got that done. We can throw out bad laws. I'm going to figure out with your help if we can pass good ones. But one that comes to mind is a property tax law thrown out down the hallway because it didn't work for Nebraskans. My privilege to argue that case, that needs to be done again. We can get things done like removing politicians who aren't fit for office. As Mayor Beitler said a few minutes ago, if we are focused, if our thoughts are together and we are reasonable and we approach on common ground, a problem of common interest. All of those things can be done. So who should help you do them in the United States Senate? I want to spend just a few minutes and state my case for why I think you should elect me as the next United States Senator from Nebraska. We are undeniably in a mess. The thing I hear more and more talking with you and people like you face to face and one on one that I did not hear from ages 23 to 58 or 9 is that things don't feel stable. The country feels like it's teetering a bit and we need to refocus and get it together. We cannot self-congratulate our ways out of this and simply proclaim that we are the greatest. If we can't keep our government open for business, pass a budget and live within it, take care of our people, tax ourselves fairly without loopholes for the big and more burden than necessary for the small, we can't enjoy the esteem of the world. And if we don't have the esteem of the world, we are not only less safe overseas, we are less safe in downtown Lincoln because it's the prestige of the United States that has always kept us secure. So we need now Nebraska's strongest and clearest 
and most focused and most reasonable voice. The people of Nebraska must judge who that is. I suggest to you that it just might be me. Folks, when an issue requires precision, it commands an awareness of the facts. The facts have to be found. We are at a moment in our history when we're troubled with disagreement about the facts. We never really get to the issue. Let's find the facts. The facts should not be subject to debate once found. They are stubborn things that lay in the middle of the road and you pick them up and then examine what they mean. We should identify what the law is and ask ourselves, how should it change? What should it be? And decide how we will test what it should be. Is it what is best for today, for next week, or are we required to make the view of a real investment in our people over time. I think it's the latter. Those things can be changed with a strong and clear voice. But in order to get it done, that voice and its strength and its clarity must have one more quality. And that quality is that whoever possesses that voice must have the ability to stand up and reach beyond partisanship, stand up and reach beyond bickering and look for real solutions. This morning, I had an email from a county chairman, a Democratic Party county chairman in western Nebraska who said to me in response to a message I sent a couple days ago, this must be a mistake. The people who you've said who are going to come support you, and I had a list at the event that I'm going to at a, his city and county in western Nebraska, they're all Republicans. And I said, I know, and we're only starting. It's time for a new coalition of Nebraskans, a coalition of Nebraskans who are willing to focus on what's good for all of us and not be divided by what's good for a few, a coalition of Nebraskans who will not accept at face value something declared to be news but turns out to be one side's propaganda. It's time for Nebraskans to analyze and identify the facts. Ask what is the law? How should it change? And then take a statesman's view to the approach of changing it. Thoughtful, reflective, reasonable, and moving us forward. We can not be stuck in a debate over 40-year issues and stand tall, firm, and keep pace with the world. It can't happen. Folks, we have fundamental problems that can change. Let me mention just a few and the things that can be done about them. We have a problem of definition. Each of you here is a human being. That's the first qualification of citizenship. You have the right to vote. You have the right to due process of law. You have the right to protection against unreasonable searches and seizures by any administration. And you have the right to create corporations. Big corporations are not the equal of citizens that change in the law can be made if we are focused, if our approach to it is reasonable, and if we simply recognize the simple fact that I just mentioned that we have a temperature somewhere around 96 to 98 degrees when we're healthy and corporations don't. We will not get all we want. There is only a single solution ultimately to our problems, and that's at the ballot box. That awareness, more than any other, broke me out of a comfortable and pleasant and productive and very fulfilling life of service as a lawyer and made me realize I have to do this thing today. We can, at the ballot box, make fundamental changes, but we can't do it by 
focusing on partisanship. We have to focus on facts than solutions. There are solutions. There are fundamental solutions. We talk about the need for jobs, but we don't focus really on the cause for their departure from our country. Where have all our jobs gone? They've gone overseas. They haven't disappeared. They've shrunken to consolidation and merger. They haven't been outdone by technology. Each time Wall Street has another triumph, each time another corporation goes together, each time the CEO wrings out the dishcloth that he considers jobs or she considers jobs and puts them in a cheaper place or downsizes because of corporate efficiency, we lose employment in the United States. We reward that with loopholes in our tax structure. I call it tax and spend tax policy. More money spent in the Internal Revenue Code by not collecting it from taxpayers who should pay it than we spend in most of the other budget components of the United States. These are physical and structural problems with government. They will lead us to the problems, the solutions to problems with social issues. But first, we've got to get the structure right. That structure is as simple as the preamble to the Constitution. And recalling why we were formed as a nation so that we could be certain that we could do those fundamental things. We strive to form a more perfect union, but we do not have a monopoly on what perfect is, none of us in this room, so we compromise in a democracy. We promote our general welfare, but after we provide for the common defense. We secure the blessings of liberty to ourselves not by bickering, not by outsourcing, not by selling our debt to our greatest competitor in the world and being beholden to it, but by building our country up and keeping its bridges and its highways current and its military force strong and focused and by being reasonable. I'm told that reasonableness isn't a very sexy political message, but it is the message of a solution. And I bet Nebraskans are looking for a solution. Carol and I will be saying the same thing on the 1st and 2nd and 3rd of November that I've just said. We will say it as clearly as we can as articulately as we can, as Nebraskans through and through, through and through enough to be emotional about it. We'll get this done. Thank you for being here.